Got another scan tool to look at today, and this is the Launch Sea Reader Elite specific for Toyota. Let's open it up and take a look. Hey, what's up YouTube down the fix it man got another quick video here for you this company launch reached out and sent me this x431 c reader elite specific for toyota vehicles it'll also work on a lexus we're sitting in my 2004 toyota tundra and so i just thought this would be a perfect vehicle to plug this in and see how it does now you will need to connect to a wireless network to be able to download all of the latest software and update everything and so i've already done that so now let's get it hooked up to the truck just plug that in Oh, well, that's a nice bright display, but let's go ahead and turn the key on. It's a pretty simple user interface here. There's a home button, a back button, and then like this little button right here looks like uh, settings. So you can go in here and change the units of measurement, the brightness, sound, network, time zone, language, workshop information. Let's, uh, let's make it a little bit brighter. And this is a touch screen, so you can click on each one of these little icons here. So we have diagnostics, OBD2, mall, upgrade, data, and settings. So I believe the settings does the exact same thing as this one here. That's the settings button. So diagnostics, of course, is what we're going to be working with and going in and scanning the vehicle. OBD2 is kind of more of a shortcut icon that will get you directly into the OBD2 functions and features. Mall is where you can purchase upgrades. Now this tool does come with a lot of features built in. Some of the capabilities, I guess, are not included. And so you have to go into the mall well, we have to be connected to the network to do that, but I think that's where you can go in and you can purchase some of the features and whatnot. But upgrade is what I did last night in order to download the most recent software. So we should be good there. Let's go ahead and go to what we really want to look at, which is diagnostics. And since I have the key on, this should be able to connect to the vehicle. Now it has the auto detect feature here or function. I'm going to select that. And it's asking me if I have a Sequoia or a Tundra. Now it says double cab or others. We'll hit double cab. So we can do a health report, system selection, service function, customized setting, or vehicle information. Let's go ahead and do a health report first. So it looks like we've got green check marks all the way down. So we can take a look at that report. We've got a nice healthy vehicle, which is great. Everything looks like it's all normal on here. Now, if you did have a fault code, this is something that you can hit share and send that to a customer, but you do have to be connected to the Wi-Fi in order to do that. So let's hit the back button. Let's hit system selection, all systems, powertrain, chassis, or body. Let's just select body. And here we have the body control module, driver's door, passenger door, sliding roof. Now this vehicle does not have a sliding roof, but let's hit the driver's door. So this ECU controls the door lock and power window on the driver's side. Let's hit OK. So I'm going to hit actuation test. Power window, select that. This test will move the power window up or down. This test causes the vehicle parts to move. Please watch your hands and feet. Let's hit OK. Power window, auto switch. Let's hit OK. Let's select up. It's already up. <laughs> Sorry, let's hit down. My window just went down. Let's hit up. That's pretty neat that you can roll the window up or down or test that with this unit here. So we'll hit the uh, back button. So we could do the same thing with the passenger door or sliding roof if we had one. Let's go back. I'm gonna take a look at uh, service function. So here we have a few other options, oil service light reset, ABS bleeding, electronic throttle sensor reset, immobilizer keys programming. That's pretty awesome that the immobilizer or key programming is included with this. It's so nice to have this capability to do programming of keys for the immobilizer. I've had several vehicles where I've either lost the keys or you know had to purchase another one. And sometimes it's easy, certain vehicles, you know, you can turn it on, off, and press the throttle pedal or brake pedal so many times. You know, there's a lot of different sequences that you have to do, but it's so nice to have a tool that can help you do that rather than having to take that to the dealer or to a locksmith and pay a few hundred dollars. So this tool can pay for itself just by programming one or two keys. So that's pretty awesome. Also just the ABS bleeding function. This truck does have that master cylinder with all kinds of other features on it. And it's, you know, it's got the ABS and everything integrated. It's a very complicated master cylinder. The fact that you can bleed that, that is so nice that you can do that. So we're not gonna do that right now, but this function is used to purge air from the hydraulic braking system. That's amazing that we have this ABS function. I love having that. 
I've had some problems with other vehicles in the past. And it's really hard to bleed out the air in the ABS unit. And so it's nice to have something like this built in. Let's go back. Let's go to customize setting. These are all of the options here. So you have the wireless door lock, door lock security, power window, wiper, illuminated entry, warning, light control, slide roof, and others. So for example, illuminated entry, right now it says lighting time. So let's take a look at that. Right now, this is the function to change the lighting time after closing the door. Right now it's set to 15 seconds. So we can change that up to 30 seconds or down to 7.5 seconds. I'm gonna leave it at 15, I'm, I'm fine with that. But pretty neat that you can uh, get in there and change some things. So let's go back and let's try the OBD2 and take a look at what that menu looks like. Oh, we need to exit the current diagnosis first. So let's hit yes, we wanna end that diagnostic session. And then we're gonna now, we'll, we'll try the OBD2 and see if that works. Okay, so in the OBD2, this is showing check engine light status is off, no DTCs, readiness is completed, all seven. Readiness not completed, zero. Readiness not supported, four. Data stream supported, 26. So there's 26 data PIDs that we can take a look at to go into our live data. So let's, let's take a look at that. I'm gonna hit enter. So here we go, we can read the inspection and monitor readiness mode, read live data, which is what I wanna take a look at. So these are all of the PIDs of data or parameter IDs that we can take a look at. 26 different things. So let's just select all and hit okay. Now without the vehicle on, a lot of these values are going to be at zero. Throttle position is at 19. That's pretty common. You don't usually have a zero on that. Engine coolant temperature is at 59 degrees, RPM is zero. I'm gonna start the truck now and then we'll take a look and see those values change. So now we've got our RPMs jumped up, 1320. It's just warming up right now. Fuel system, OL, that's showing open loop. No, there, now it says closed loop. So it's t it takes a minute to, to read everything here. And then it's showing the ignition timing, intake air temperature 62. There's our fuel trims and vehicle speed is at zero. We're not going anywhere. Well, that's pretty neat for the live data. You can see quite a few things. And then you can take a look at freeze frame, which we shouldn't have any freeze frame data because we don't have any diagnostic trouble codes or check engine lights. And you can go in and clear fault codes, O2 sensor monitor, onboard monitor test, read vehicle information. Well, there's a lot of things in here. Let's go ahead and end our diagnostic session. And that's pretty much it. I'm, I know I really just kind of barely scratched the surface here, but just kind of wanted to show you how this tool functions and performs. I think it does a pretty good job. I mean, some of those functions and features, the ABS bleed and the immobilizer, it's very valuable to be able to program a key and or bleed your ABS system. I mean, just the immobilizer function alone can help pay for this tool with just one key programming. So I think this is definitely worth it. I would recommend this tool. As you can see, it's pretty easy to use as well. I like the size. It's nice and compact. I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up this exact same scan tool as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.